Satan's masterpiece. He actually has saved people teaching false gospels. Now, this isn't new. This started back a long time ago at Acts chapter 15, where some Pharisees who believed added on to faith in Jesus. They said you have to get circumcised and obey the law to be saved. Well, the apostles came together and knocked that heresy down, but it started a long time ago, and it is going on right now. Now, I learned about this 30 years ago, and I was stunned. But before I tell you that story about these people who are saved teaching false gospels, let me explain and make sure everybody understands the true saving gospel. Let's quickly review that. It's defined at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4. It's about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, and died for our sins on that cross. Then he offered eternal life to us as a free gift, Romans 6, 23. Well, how do we get that free gift? Now, there's a lot of verses that we, I could use to explain how we get that free gift, but I really like Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. One reason I like it, because that is exactly what the thief on the cross did to be saved from hell. He just looked to Jesus, put his faith, belief, trust in him, and nothing else. And that was it. He couldn't come down from that cross and do all these works gospels that are being taught out there right now. All right, so let's get on to save people teaching false gospels. Recently, uh, a nationally known religious man got on TV and told people how to get to heaven. Now, if I told you his name, you would instantly recognize him. He gave three requirements to get to heaven. Number one, repent. Well, he didn't explain anything about what repent means, and that's a very important word. I do have a video on that. It's video number 101. Of, it's about repent. A lost person must repent of one sin to be saved, unbelief in Jesus. He didn't explain any of that. Then on his second requirement, the wheels come off. A total non-biblical requirement, totally false. He told everybody in the United States of America that they had to turn from their sins. You know, all that is is you got to clean up your life. You got to change your behavior. You got to do works before you can trust in Jesus. That's totally false. There's not one verse in the New Testament that says that or teaches that. Not one. Do you know also of any human sinner in the history of the world that's turned from their sins every minute of every day in every thought, word, and deed? Nobody's ever done that. The salvation teaching is getting so bad that we're giving requirements to lost person people that nobody's ever accomplished. Why teach that? Here's why. Because that man and many other like him have gotten away from Bible truth. They no longer have the, uh, the, the Bible as their final authority for truth. Now, finally, on the third requirement, he got it right. Believe on Jesus. That's the only thing you need. That's what he should have said from the beginning. Now, I've seen this man on TV five times in the last two, two and a half years telling people how to get to heaven. He's been wrong three times and right twice. That's pretty bad when you can't consistently tell people the truth on how to be saved. You must turn from your sins before trusting in Jesus is a very popular false gospel taught by saved people. I could give you more examples. I don't have time for it today. On to another very popular false gospel taught by saved people. It's the gospel that you must give your life to Jesus to be saved. Totally false. I made a video about this, number 105. It was where in a large denomination, fifth graders were taught that false gospel. You have, must give your life to Jesus to be saved. I even met with four deacons of the church, and they all agreed that it was false, but they're going to keep teaching it because that's the way they've always done it. That's their tradition. Now, since this was a very large denomination, I sent letters, many letters, to denominational leaders and even to seminary presidents with eight reasons outlining why that teaching is false. Do you think I got any response? I got one. I got one from a seminary professor. It was an email. He is a professor of biblical studies. He's got a Ph.D. I got that e email June 13th, 2003 at 1.53 in the afternoon. And this is 
the seminary response. This is what he said, the seminary professor response. The teaching that a lost person must give their life to Jesus is true because the word believe in Greek means basically you must give your life to Jesus to be saved. Once again, I responded to him with eight doctrinal reasons why that was false. That's video number 22. Now, I don't have time to go over all those eight reasons, but I will give you one reason I gave him while he was wrong. If the word believe means give your life to Jesus to be saved, then that should be reflected in English translations. For example, Acts 16, 30, 31 says, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So, if that seminary professor is correct, this is what it really should say. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Give your life to Jesus, and thou shalt be saved. Doesn't say that. None of the uh, translations say that. You know, the translators, the Bible translators, are just a little bit smarter than that seminary professor. Now remember, he's a seminary professor. Now that email's from 2003. Guess what he does? He teaches other people that stuff. He's a teacher of people. Wow. Now, did the seminary professor respond to me? No. Seminary professors and seminary people tend not to like Bible believers that teach the truth. Now, that seminary professor, he was either ignorant, deceived, confused, or he was a heretic. Now, in my opinion, based on this and other examples that I don't have time for, the seminaries and Bible colleges are 99% or more satanically corrupt. This is the kind of stuff that comes out of seminaries and Bible colleges. I believe most of the, the false gospels that save people teach come from seminaries and Bible colleges. How does this happen? How does it happen? Once again, it happens because they have gotten away from their authority for truth, the Bible. He has done it. Satan has done it from his perspective. It's a great accomplishment. He has saved people telling lost people how to go to hell. I would be very surprised if your religious organization taught Bible truth on how to have eternal life. Now, what should you do? Well, first of all, be aware of this. Make sure you are saved. Make sure that your family members are saved. It's so simple. God made it so simple to get that free gift, like a thief on the cross. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, lastly, how could you determine whether your religious organization teaches the truth? Simply ask them. I'm going to give you two examples. Two questions that can be tied directly back to a clear, direct Bible verse. Number one, what do you teach is necessary to have everlasting life? You go to John 6, 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. It's believe on Jesus. Next question, what does your religious organization teach is necessary to be saved? Go directly to Acts 16, 30, 31. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Or you could go to Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Or you could go to Romans 10, 9, 10 to find out the truth. Now, they could use the word repent in there. Ask them what the word repent means. The word repent to be saved means that a lost person must repent, change their mind of one sin, their unbelief in Jesus. Look at John 16, verse 8 and 9. Now, this TikTok video is a little bit longer than normal. I, use, I like to keep it to four minutes. Give me some feedback. Would you like four-minute videos or maybe longer sometime if the situation warrants it? Bottom line, teach the truth to people how to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ.